Do you want to become a filmmaker? Or maybe you just want to try creating a few videos to see if the glove fits. Either way, you'd want to know what it really comes down to. But why waste months figuring out if it's worth it or not when you can just use me as your case study? I made five short films in three months using AI. Dear yeah, professor, it's just pieces fitting together. Goodbye! Soft and cute. Point, but what if I do? I take a step back and see Send the my picture. Always what about this? And today, I'm gonna share everything that I've learned in that journey, including the best tools that worked for me and what nobody talks about. The real challenges and cost of being an AI filmmaker. All the links in this video are found in the description. Pre-production. What you need at this stage is a script, characters, and the art style. So one thing you need to realize this early on is that large language models like ChatGPT are the ultimate assistant for filmmakers. You need them in almost every step of the process, or at least they can be helpful. Now, before I have a finished script, I usually start out with the story concept. Like I get, I have an idea in my head and ask ChatGPT to flesh it out. For example, put me on the spot here. Um, let's say I want a zombie apocalypse story. Obviously, I could add more details to refine this, but I'm just gonna start with this one. So it gives me a fully fleshed out story. Now, remember, you can be as detailed as you want when you're trying to craft the initial draft of your story and you feed it to ChatGPT and usually it, it does help with providing some suggestions that you may or may not use. Now, for the visuals, I usually use Midjourney. Uh, if not, I use Flux. So Midjourney is a paid AI image generator. It's by far the easiest and most convenient one to use. If you're a professional who just wants to focus on the creative aspects of filmmaking, this would be my top recommendation. But if you want a free tool that's open source, Flux could be a great alternative. However, just do note, it does require a strong computer to run, but then again, it's free. Flux also shines when it comes to realism. Just know that it's a bit more tedious to use than Midjourney. Here's another example of a character that I've used in my Santa Turns Naughty film. Got two warm hands and a mouth that's won me thousands of subscribers. Let's make a deal. You give me my music box and I'll give you a sloppy Christmas special. I was able to generate her in different poses, as you can see here. Now, realistic styles like this are the most popular these days. However, you don't have to limit yourself to this because you could try anime, you could do 2D animation, 3D animation, any art style that you can think of. I've even done some pixel animation in one of my films. So you are more than free to express yourself in any art style you want. Though I will say this, uh, most AI video generators are trained on realistic videos. So realistic videos might be the safest option if you're trying to avoid complexity um, in the beginning. Uh, moving on to the production stage, there are three things you need. One is the AI video generator to animate the images. And then you're gonna need voice generators for dialogues and narration. And lastly, you're gonna need a music generator for soundtrack, um, background music. Now there are three major AI video generators that I use. I would say that Kling AI is by far the best overall and it's what I mainly use for the most difficult renders, especially those that require realism and dynamic motion. However, it is expensive and there are no unlimited plans, so I tend to use it sparingly and I always use it alongside another vid AI video generator that has an only plan. My two options for that would be Runway and Minimax. Runway is not as good as Minimax. Uh, it's not as good as Kling. Uh, the motions can be a bit unrealistic. However, it, it is feature rich. It has like a video background remover. It has Act 1, which basically allows you to animate different characters using yourself as the driving video. Basically, you record yourself. But I also recommend Minimax because Minimax is the best when it comes to um, 2D animation, especially non-realistic renders. So you could choose either of the two depending on your use case. For voices, I would recommend either Eleven Labs if you have the spare cash to spend. It also has a free version by the way, which is sufficient enough in many cases. However, there is also a free alternative called F5DTS. It allows you to clone any voice. All you need is like 15 seconds of audio and that's it. Now for music, there are two main tools that I use, Suno and Udio. I mainly use Suno because it's so easy to create a catchy song with it. However, uh, if you want more control and perhaps a more advanced way to create songs, I would recommend Udio. 
if you know what you're doing, you could actually make higher quality soundtracks. For post-production, what you need is a video editing tool and a photo editing tool like Photoshop. For the video editing tool, I use Premiere Pro. Uh, it is a bit expensive, so I also recommend using free alternatives like DaVinci Resolve or even CapCut. For photo editing, I would recommend you use Photopea. It has almost all the useful features of Photoshop and it's free. Now, post-production is really the part where you need to develop some solid filmmaking skills such as color grading because you want to ensure that the entire film looks cohesive and not look like uh, a slideshow of a bunch of clips stitched together. Which, by the way, some of my commenters pointed out about my previous films. Also, I would recommend that you utilize websites with free stock motion graphics like this one. It's quite useful for like um, things like rain, snow, or solar flares. You could add in as effects on top of your generated videos and they're free most of the time. So now let's talk about costs. So here's my workflow. Now I'm gonna share this with you. ChatGPT Plus costs $20 per month. Midjourney $30. Claim the Pro subscription is $32. Take note, this isn't the highest tier. Runway or Minimax would cost you $95. Suno and Udyo are free. Eleven Labs is also free, but for me, I spend a $5 subscription. Premiere Pro costs $22 per month. I I'm not even going to account for the Photoshop subscription here. So in total, it's $204 per month. Yeah, it's a lot of money burning every month. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to spend as much as this one as you could do fine with just a low budget workflow like this one. So for this, you're going to be utilizing free AI assistants like Meta AI or Bing Chat instead of using ChatGPT. Um, the only difference is instead of paying with money, you're paying with your data here. And then you could use free credits from AI image generators. New ones pop up every week and they're willing to give free credits. You might be having trouble generating consistent art styles, but eh. It, at least you're not spending anything. For the AI video generators, I would recommend getting either a Runway or a Minimax subscription, which would cost you $95 for the only plan. This will allow you to generate as many videos as you can without trouble. You'll spend a total of $95 per month. So how much have I earned from creating these AI films? And the answer will shock you. It's zero. Probably didn't shock you as much as it did. Anyway. It has given me some opportunities. There are some clients who are hiring me for their project because of the videos they've seen. It has given opportunities for collaboration. Uh, there are some who also offer some sponsorships. Is it worth it? Well, to be honest with you, I'm starting to doubt that it is because it costs me a lot to do this. But since AI is rapidly evolving and the industry appears to be moving in this direction, I think these expenditures will be worth it as they are investments in myself and my future. I hope this video is worth it for you though. Thank you so much for watching.